What's your current opinion on the political climate with everything that's happening overseas? I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> How are the 10 year goals going? Every day it just feels like small L's. I can cry my eyes out. <laughs> this is... Maybe this is why I kept taking Adderall. Were you addicted? I was addicted. Like just stop. I think the Pokemon helps me with my ADHD. I tried to catch a Magmar for 14 hours. You're kind of a loser. He's actually being serious. No, he's not joking. Wait, you're not Natty? <laughs> Are you excited to get married? No. What? No, no, no. I can't. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Don't Be Sour. I'm your host, Max Tuning, and we have the man, the myth, the legend, Guma. Back. What's up? What's up? What's up? It has been eight months since yeah. our last Potter. A lot's changed. I know. For we, both of us, man. We are going to freaking dive into it. You want to you take a shot? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Obviously. we have. You know, a lot of people, I, I felt like for a while, the alcohol is one of those things. Like, you don't actually need to have it, but I, I, I like it's it. It's so much fun, bro. I was, I was lucky hoping we would drink. I went and bought this t today just for you. You know, you know which one of these cost? N no. How much do you think this is? Class says, ooh, it's fancy. You is know the, the bell. Same, is it the same price as the white one with the blue? Uh, it should be, yeah. Is it identical price? It should be. That, that one, this one's just 129. like... 129. 150. I was going to guess 150. Like, what? It looks 150, bro. It's all more... It's crazy. Like, I'm sure it's a little bit higher quality, but is it... Is it like a hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah, my sign doesn't light up. The sign's going to... Oh, I was saying, like, isn't that every product in the world? Sour strip, Alpha, isn't it? It's okay. We'll take the shot. Yeah, but when yeah, 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 yeah whatever, dude. Cheers. cheers, cheers to us, bro. Mmm. I feel like we should just dive into hard topics, man. What's your yeah. current thought on? <laughs> oh God. What's your current opinion on the political climate with everything that's happening overseas? Oh, God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that 2024 is going to be fucking chaos for yeah. the world. So I think everybody needs to, and, I, and I'm one of those types of people where like politics don't really ever affect like, you. we're both the same way. Yeah. Like we don't ever let like election or really anything like steer us. We're just going to do what we need to do and things are going to play out. And that's how you have to live life, 100%. But next year, the market, it's going to be a shit storm. In with a good every, way, and, way. Well, it's going to be a very chaotic is the best word word to use, I think. Do, do you think that we live our, like, especially with everything that's going on, like politics and whatnot, where we kind of just like, like, hey, whatever's going to happen, I got to keep pivoting my life? Yeah, in a way, I kind of feel like sort of like, like I'm not standing, I'm not like, I'm just riding the wave. We have our head in the sand. Yeah, yeah. And in a way, I think you, it's easy to, I mean, yeah, I feel like that. But I also think that it's a dark road that you just like, once you start watching that news and you start kind of making that a part of your life, it really does, like, I mean, I, I do a lot of I'd say like thirty percent of my social media consumption's like political or really, yeah, bro. And it's really like draining. Yeah, like re, it's really sad. And I feel like to talk about it, you either need to be really well versed on it, or you should just probably shut up. Yeah, because because I feel like if I if I tried to even be, to yeah. give any opinion, I would sound like an idiot. Yeah, and then everyone with the camera just recording you, you're like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I remember, but. On a real, on a real note, dude. Eight months. We're both getting married. Yeah, the past couple podcast. I mean, so I had Taylor on. Obviously, we talked about our engagement. Then I had Charlie and Joe, bro. Charlie and Joe. Charlie's got engaged. I know. <laughs> and not to have every podcast about talking about engagement, but this man, bro. What are we gonna do? Oh yeah, tell, tell me, tell me. This man's engaged. I yeah, know. <laughs> to the beautiful Heidi Summers, the Buff Bunny. After seven years, I thought you were talking about Charlie for for that second, but yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, in what way? Uh, I don't just that like you said like this man. I'm like Charlie, yeah, Charlie, but you know me, yeah, we're engaged, bro. Seven years, almost seven. It's not seven yet. It's does, seven on Sunday, the day we're actually getting legally documentation signed, like the the contract. Yeah, like forty eight hours from now. Is it like so? You, so you you went there and you got the the contract. Like you initially signed it and then you said you have to wait like 48 hours? Yeah, like you sign it, but then 72 hours you have to wait for a, you have to like do it with a witness. So on Sunday, we're going to get a witness to come and like, I don't even know, bro. I'm just if, like, if you had a witness ride. the first day, could you have done it all then? No, you have to wait 72 hours. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's so like, you don't like, oh, let's go get married. And then you go there and you sign it and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I think that gives you like a little bit of. Yeah, it's like an old school thing. Mm. I didn't really know, I wasn't really understanding why. 
but because like you think when you go to sign, you're ready to sign. You know, I was. I mean, I mean, if 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 people don't know, it's like you don't actually get married at a wedding. You get married at the courthouse. Was it there's like a line of people? Like not one, not one person in line. <laughs> really? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Well, you probably got what you got. It was on a on a Wednesday at it was one p.m. It was early. It was early. How does it feel to be engaged, bro? Honestly, feels good. Like I think that more than how I feel, I see a difference in Heidi. Do you see a difference in Taylor? Well, yeah, bro. Like a big difference. (laughs) I didn't think there'd be a difference, bro. I was like, I mean, in my head, I'm like, nothing's gonna really change. Now they're reaching for everything with their left hand. Yeah, I mean, she's just Heidi's like glowing, bro. It's been like two months. She's been glowing. Has Taylor just been non like totally oh, it's yeah. just like different? It's like different. Yeah, no, for sure. Do I you, didn't think it'd be a big deal. Do you ever? I mean, I don't know. Like Taylor takes her ring off when she's like, well, you know, washing her hands, doing you know, cleaning something, whatever, so she doesn't get stuff on it. Oh wow. Do, do you ever? I know she t- she's Damn. well, she works at a jeweler, so <laughs> yeah. she probably knows like the super intricacies of like when you should and should. She's getting Heidi. It's like she's start, Heidi's starting to do that. Like a she's starting to like, I mean, I'm noticing it off and off more and more. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like taking care of it. So no, it's- last night, uh, Taylor makes sure she sleeps. Like, so she took it off to make, uh, she was like cleaning like the pot uh, and the pan from dinner. And she, we went to bed. She was like, oh, hold on my ring on. And I was like, I'll go get it. Like, like even if it's in the kitchen or something, like she wants to wear it when she's sleeping. She wants to like wear it at all yeah, times. Yeah, you lose it, bro. Easy. <sighs> I know. And I feel, do you ever, do you ever just like grab the engagement ring and just like look at it and you're like, damn. Yeah, well, I look at it because it gets so it dirty. It represents so it's much. It's so dirty so quick. I'm like, what the fuck? So I know. Expensive. Well, it's Why like it the, so dirty so quick? It's like the lotions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But no, man, I'm so happy. Are you happy? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. It's it's a really wild, like, point in our lives to... Because this is it. Me and Max were like... I mean, you were always single. I was pretty much always in a relationship. But I think marriage, we kind of viewed as the same thing. What's kind of, Just kind of like, you know... No urgency to get there. No, you know, and for me, I mean, you would always ask me like after every podcast, you know, when's it, but it, it's almost like to me, I think that sort of, I took so long, but you took what a year and a half, two years, two years, almost two. Yeah. About a year, yeah. Almost a year and a half. Yeah. So like that's, that's great. It's great. Like, but I, I think for me, it only took so long because of the time of the lives that we met. Yeah, for sure. I, like, I met, I met Taylor when I'm like, Ready. I'm yeah, I'm fucking I'm, Max shooting, bro. <sighs> That's right, baby. <laughs> no, I, I was at the right time. I met Taylor. Taylor met me at the right time and it was it was like serendipitous. How do you uh like what what made what made you I think you're gonna get like you do you, you know that you're gonna like I think be our person, right? To do the Oh the uh Heidi wants you, I want you to, bro. The uh the wedding. The offici- the officiant of yeah, I think so. I'm going to read you. I'm going to yeah, be the guy. Yeah, you're going to be the guy. I didn't know. Okay, will, will you be the guy? Yeah. All right. I didn't know for a long. I thought you had to. It was like a whole thing. Apparently, you can get. Me too. I was, when Heidi first said it, I was like, Max? <laughs> I'm like, why Max? Dude, I'm great at talking. <laughs> no, I know. I know, but I'd start laughing. I'm like, I, I'm going to look at you and look at her and just like do something. No, I won't. I won't. I, want, I wonder, do I do I make up what I say? Or is there like a, you follow biblical? You definitely biblical. follow a part. But I think you can make up whatever you want around it. And you should definitely do that. Like, I'm going to be crying like a bitch, bro. I'm going to be on the beach fucking crying my eyes out. You think you're going to, you, are you going to be the crier when you see, like, Heidi walking Probably down? Probably before she walks out. <laughs> yeah. You think? <laughs> yeah. I ain't reading no vows in front of nobody. Are you going to read your vows? Are you going to print them off and read them? Or are you going to remember no. them? Would you have to? I thought you could choose to do it, like, like privately. Oh, I guess you could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ain't about to put on the show, man. Mm-mm. No? No. I'm dreading the first dance, too. Yeah, I guess you don't really like to be in the public eye, so I can understand why you wouldn't want to do that. He's actually being serious. Like, he's not joking. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most like popular f- social media fitness guy in the world. and I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> My heart's racing. Why, uh, why did you... Why do you think... So everyone, like, I feel like for the opposite reasons, like for me, when I got engaged, it was, wow, this is really fast like a year and a half. Mm. And then a lot of people for you have been like, wow, it's really slow. What, 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 what was like the, the moment where you said it's time it's ready. Okay. And why the very, <laughs> it's funny. The last podcast I was on <laughs> here on sour strips podcast, you, we ended the podcast where you asked me a question. And I think I said like, I, I, I kind of deflected like just not right now. It kind of yeah. like not, you know, uh, and then that led to a conversation. Yeah, that led to a. Then we were watching the Ultimatum on Netflix. What's that? 
it's like an ultimatum. It's called like, the ultimatum. Uh, so you can kind of like guess what it's like. A, couples go in and they're essentially one partner wants to get married. The other one's not ready. So the, the both of the partners date other people. What? Yeah. And then see if they still want to get married. That sounds like the dumbest. Anyway, we watched that. <laughs> and then like almost, I don't know what episode you were on, but Heidi like stops it. And she's like, I want to get married. I'm like, okay. You know, in that that conversation, like that, I don't want to go in detail what we talked about. Yeah. But like that conversation was the first time I real. I was like, she's telling me she wants to get married, and it processed. So yeah. I, I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. I, I feel like uh, I don't feel different about her though. I've always felt the same way. Yeah, no, but it, it, it's so interesting now because now that I've, I've this is obviously my, the longest relationship I've ever been in, it, and the most serious. What was the longest before? Like like other a year. than a year, like twelve months? Yeah, like oh. right right at twelve months, and it was never as magical as this one. But I was telling Taylor the other night that I was, I was like, I couldn't imagine. Like obviously we ain't breaking up ever, but I'm like, I couldn't even imagine. It, it would be like a video game. I, I wouldn't believe it's real life if we were to ever break up and I see you with someone else. I'd be like, no, that that's not a real, that's not a real relation. There, there's no way. Like yeah. you, I'm, you're, I'm your person. You're my person. I couldn't imagine being with someone else. I couldn't imagine you being with someone else. Super strange. Yeah. That, that's kind of what dating is. I know. <laughs> how, how are your thoughts on marriage? You, you, you excited? You scared? I'm excited, bro. Uh, honestly, like ever since, I think the biggest thing was getting the ring. Like, like, or I guess just like coming to the conclusion, like having leading to that conversation with her, like that was the hardest part. Because after that, like after hearing her say that, I bought the ring like in March, bro. Yeah. And like, I didn't ask her until what, like September. So had it that whole time. Thanks to Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. For helping yeah. me find that and pick that and design that but i forgot where i was going with that what was it christian's hammered already yeah. <laughs> are you excited to get married? anything bro <laughs> let's yeah. do another one another shot yeah all right all right are you excited to get married yeah 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 what's I going what, what's going through your head bro uh no stress i think i'm getting married on sunday so i got to get an outfit ready for that <laughs> and then like uh <laughs> and then we're looking at March fourth. Oh shit! In Can- bro, yeah, like, like we're, we're getting invitation. Like Hanny's flying to the Caymans on Monday, staying Tuesday, coming back Wednesday, going to like three different locations because the ones we want, the ones we want. It's the I beach. Am it's, it's, Jesus all of the- it's different though. Mm. Like we want, I want to get married at the like on the piece of fucking sand where I told Heidi I loved her. That'd be dope. Do you know this spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in front of Caribbean Club. You might remember that. Yeah, yep. a little drunk on the times we go, but when you float and you float around in the little, you know, kind of drift off, uh-huh. a little drunk in the water, you know. But <laughs> on the right hand side of Caribbean, before the Ritz, on that there's like a little apartment style one, yeah. sort of right there in front. You know, I feel like uh, I feel like most people would look at you as a social media guy and think that you're gonna have. Because I feel like throughout your entire history of social media, you've always been kind Bigger of bigger is better, above and beyond yeah. top, like whether it be the events, the cars, the gyms, the vision, the whatever, but your wedding is not going to be a, Bro, like, that, that was my extravagant. Twi- that was my 20s. 30s is cleanup year. 30s is cleanup phase Bro, of my you life. you look jacked. Bro, I feel, I'm low-key flexing because I'm, yeah, I'm you look, thanks, man. I'm starting to, like, lose the weight, the water weight, and it's, like, settling. So I'm, like, 215 right now, which is good. You were a big boy. I got to 230. I don't like that weight. That sounds like a lot to carry around, especially as like I couldn't wear this watch when I was two thirty. That look, <laughs> you're like, why is my hand purple? It's like cutting off the circulation. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I'm excited for uh, for the next chapter of our lives, man. Why is mine so much bigger than yours? You need it. I got to loosen you up a little bit more. Ooh. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. <sighs> you got to use the coasters, bro. This is an expensive ass table. You know who, you know who? <laughs> I know where you're going. Christian, y'all don't know this table. I think I've mentioned this before. This is a $5,000. Beautiful oh. restoration hardware table that you use. So. It's beautiful, but you can't, if you were to write on a piece of paper, there's like riv, There's like the, the wood grain. You can't write on this shit. Christian, before I moved to Texas, th- this is how he got me. Okay. I want to, th- this is, a st- <laughs> do you know the story about this table? I'm 90% sure I know the story. Why don't you tell it in your version? Okay, here's my version. 
we're moving into an office together. Max I'm, and I. I'm, I'm moving Max from Virginia. Max is moving his life. I finally convinced the guy. I'm like, bro, just move here. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Right? So he moves. And I'm like, we can even like get this bigger warehouse. It's brand new. I'll talk to the landlord. We'll move from my current one. We can go here. You can take, like, we split office space, split the warehouse. You get this division. Joe will get this, this division. He never ended up paying the rent, <laughs> but that's a different story. But Max and, and, and I end up paying the rent and sorting a deal. Okay, we're like, okay, we build out this property. Now we're building out the design room. Bro, this is wild, man. I know. The men. Wow. Okay, so we have this room no bigger than this room we're in right now. Alfleet's getting done there. Ever Forward's getting done there. Sour Strips is not an idea yet. Alfland's not an idea yet. So this room here, we have... I wanted to design it with like two desks, two tables, right? Just a really, I had a layout I wanted to do mm -hmm. and I needed the same desk. I needed this desk, I already had one. So I needed this desk and a second one. And then we had two desks and racks on both sides of the back wall. Did you I need, wifi? no. No? Yeah, so the highlight of my day is gonna be kicking your ass at pushups, so. I'm sore. From what? From chess the other day. You look like the Hulk. So I convinced Max, who's the stingiest motherfucker ever, yeah. to buy this $5,000 restoration hardware table because it would look so good in the design room for video. And they're just like, make you feel good and design better clothes. And I'm a very persuasive person. Typically, I will keep jabbing at something until I can get it. So he uh, bought the table. You were just like, bro, we can't have two different tables in the room. That'll be ridiculous. Yeah. We have to have two of the same table you should buy. And I bought this and now I'm putting it to freaking use. <laughs> and what's even shittier is this table is like substantially thicker than normal tables. Heavy. So, so any sort of, oh God, yeah, it's heavy. But any sort of clamps you want to use for table to mount things, you can't yep. because it's fucking four inches thick. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. It's the podcast table though. There you go. We've come a long way since uh, we have, man. And then Summer Park. After that office, we moved into our next office. This is like 2017 where it's myself, aka Alphalete as a company. No, I didn't move in the college. same size room. Buff Bunny started we started da oh, dating. This before, yeah. So there was me, Becca in one room, Max in one room, and then Heidi would come in and out through like whenever she was in town in Houston. And she would operate Buff Bunny for the whole day. And Max would do ever like ever forward, yeah. in and out, filming your, your thing. And we would all just like work in the same room. I don't know how the fuck we did it. I don't know if we got anything done. I wish I could go back and like look at a day in the life of that time frame. Yeah, but we did it. Do you do you think you wanted to be surrounded by everyone at that time? Or was it like a I want to maximize the savings of the building, or I want a bunch oh, of other people. I just want to be with my friend, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean? <laughs> well, I'm saying because now it's like both of us probably it's like, oh, it wouldn't be like it's it's weird. Maybe it's because the companies are a lot bigger. But now it's like, oh, oh yeah, why chance. would we all share one room together? But then it's like, yeah, it makes sense. We'll put a desk over there for you. Desk over here. for what, me. And it wasn't even I think a lot of people go into those situations for like financial reasons, like to save a dollar or That's just, what I was just doing. To, yeah, to be fair. Right. And and. and I think that may have, may have been like the justification from your end. Maybe like you're thinking of it like that. It makes sense. But I was just thinking of it like, damn, we got everybody together. I finally have friends in this fitness thing because <laughs> I was doing that for so long, bro. I was already like what year five of doing that kind of like in my just like by myself, you know, yeah. so I kind of I finally had like a friend that was doing the same thing. And I also had a girlfriend that was doing the same thing. I was like, holy shit. So cool. Dude, and I then Shawley, I remember then I convinced Shawley, I was like, you better fucking leave. You better don't, don't listen to your dad. Do an Aka. Oh, yeah, like, don't, stick don't, to go, it. don't go do oil. Yeah, don't do the oil. Like, just do it a year, and then oil will still be there in a year, I promise you. And we were sitting outside Alfleet Gym, and then then that, that it's, everything sort of, and I don't know, it's just a good, with good intentions. You know, I, I, I'm sure we've, like, harped on this before, but, and obviously you can't, like, have planned for anything, and, and you don't know where life would have taken you, but just, I think all of us together, especially, you know, I don't think I could say a million times how much of an impact that, you know, our friendship have, how, how much you, because of like your vision has elevated so many people around you, right? So many people owe their, whether they like to admit it or not, owe a, a substantial amount of their success to you kind of like putting the foundation in. But bro, like, I mean, you convincing me to move to Texas, who the fuck knows I, what my life would have been like? And even Shawley, for example, as well. I remember those conversations. Uh, he was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, you know, online coaching, a little bit of Naka, and I'm going to go over for my dad because I can't do this, like, social media thing forever. Yeah, well, he and, had guaranteed good salary there. And yeah. Not, Shawley fucking love you, bro. Like, yeah. And, and, and everyone's situation is different. But he had a good opportunity, like, a really good opportunity and a, sa and, and a safe opportunity. And I mean safe because, like, 
the, that company is not going anywhere. Right. Like, yeah. Right. And it's established. And so, it, but we didn't really have that. I don't know. It was just, um, we're all in different circumstances. So it's kind of, we were just hoping on a dream, bro. We were just having fun. I didn't have any dream. Did you? No, no. I, didn't, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> I didn't have a, I didn't have a plan, bro. We're just lucky. I, I, I associate so much of our lucky. success to lucky. So lucky. <laughs> and you know what? I like to think that, you know, no matter what, like, obviously I wouldn't be where I'm at if you, you didn't convince me to move here. But I like to think that everyone bro, you, played an integral part 100%, in you, each like, other's like Max successes. is the leveling system. You're like, for me, you play that in my, you play that role in my life where like you level my crazy shit out. You bring me back to the world, you know? Well, bro, bro, uh, you, know what, you know, something I, I wanted to actually talk about, and it's a good thing you, you mentioned that, is every time I've done these podcasts with you, I feel... I, I, I see the comments and a lot of times people will, it was like when I was talking about whether it be, you know, our first couple podcasts, a vision with alpha lead or whatever. How and people, then the negativity kind of, well, they, 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 they get, they, they make comments that say that I'm just like shutting down all of your visions, or whatever. And, and in my head, I'm like, what I'm doing is just not being, uh, you're not sucking my dick. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not like, Yes, man, dude, that's going to be the best no. idea ever. It's going to be a success. I'm more like, I don't need what if this doesn't? Sucking. What if this, we all need a little bit of dick sucking. We all need a little, we got that. I got that. <laughs> so it's so like, really like, I, I, I love Max because he just tells me what he fucking thinks. Yeah, and like if, if it's again. Yeah, it's, it's I like again to play again, devil's yeah. advocate. Yeah. I like to, if something's like this perfect vision, I'm like, well, what if this happens? Yeah. I'm not trying to be a naysayer. No. I'm just, it is what it is. <laughs> And I hope I hope that that's how I think people are real Bro, friends. No, that you are. Yeah, it is. That's a fact. Like, and you have to be a harsh critic on yourself, but also on your friends too, right? Like, I, I think and in, in tell them the truth, even when they're not. It, there's a way to do it when they're not necessarily asking for it to mm -hmm. still kind of bring something to their attention. That I think, like for me, like bro, when I got so deep in Alpha Land, that was a hard spot for me, man. And yeah. you were there, like, still kind of like with me showing like no signs of like reciprocation. There was me just literally like thin ice, right? Like fucking really thin ice for a prolonged period of time. And that timeline kept getting Years. extended and extended. And I was just, and Max was still showing up, you know, you want to work out? Want to work out? Want to work out? Want to work out? Want to no, work out? No, work out? no, 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 <laughs> I can't. Okay, fine, fine, <laughs> fine. But you need people like that in your life, man. You really do. Cause I, I think that one, he's also very persistent. So like persistency is gonna be the number one key to success, I think, in anything, in sales and fucking friendship and just persistency. Yeah. Man. Like constantly doing the thing you need to do. I think taking criticism is super helpful. Taking what? Criticism. Criticism. I didn't say that wrong. Criticism. criticism. You think I said criticism? You said it kind of funky. You know what Charlie said on the podcast what? the other day? <laughs> what? He said all in he said all of the different faucets of business. <laughs> And then, the yeah, he was like, turn on the water faucets. I was like, I think you mean facets. And then we were talking about kids. And he said that, like, talking about cutting, and he said cutting the <laughs> elliptical cord. <laughs> the elliptical cord? Oh, no. <laughs> but, bro, no, no, criticism is so important because I remember when Sour Shrimps first launched. I know we've talked about this in a previous podcast, but, like, when I came to you to... Like, I may I, not remember this. Well, so, well it's, it's, like, the logo, how you made the change to the logo. Mm -hmm. I remember coming in being like, Look how cool this logo is, and Christian looking at it, and in, ever, everyone else, not to you know negatively, but like you have like a kind of a, a creative brain, mm -hmm. but everyone else was like, sick logo, sick logo, sick logo. I showed it to you, I'm like, bro, look at the logo, it's about to get printed on boxes, and I remember you looking at it, just like pausing and being like, you, you were like already paid for the boxes. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're like, ah, I think, I think this can be tweaked a little bit. And mm. the first thought that went in my head was more like, motherfucker. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like, like no, no, bro. Like, you're supposed to just say yeah. like, awesome logo, great job, Max. Mm -hmm. You literally, I'll put, I'll put it on the screen mm -hmm. of the original, and then what you change it to to get rid of the dead space. We had to work a lot, and I can't imagine if we had gone with that first one. Did yeah. you just look as if you could see it? <laughs> yeah, I did. I was like, yeah, that's nice. Let's both look at it right now. <laughs> just look at it. Beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Right that there. was all you. The don't be sour. The, the fact that Max connected the marketing for sour strips to a podcast that has nothing to do with fucking candy. We're not even eating candy, but it makes you think about the candy. That's genius. That was right there. I'm a. Damn. I'm basically a prodigy, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're engaged. I mean, what you you came in? What you came in tenth at a bodybuilding show? What the fuck? What? No. 
Oh, oh, so, oh, sorry. You came in fifth twice. I just added at, them together. At the most challenging <laughs> fucking pro show. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Fuck you. Fifth place in Vegas, right? <laughs> fifth place in Vegas and then fifth, fifth place in Pittsburgh, which are like the guys. It was hard. It was, they were hard shows. They did pretty good. Okay. I'm going to ask you two questions. Got kind of lucky with who showed up. Not yeah. Lie. Okay. <laughs> Before you got to the show to see who was going to compete. Which show? The first one, which is like warm up or the second one? I mean, you play second one. I was really in it. I was like, okay, either one. You can pick one in your head. All right. But when you got to whatever show, what place did you think you were going to get to before you saw the competition? Were you like, I'm dialed as fuck. Like I'm looking sick. This goes for both shows. Seventh, eighth. Wait, before you even saw the competition. Yeah. And then when you saw the competition, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm not. I'm not going to put a front like first, first, first because that's bullshit. Going into a pro show or to try to become a pro. On my first attempt, my first year, I'm giving myself 10 years to become a pro. Well, nine years um, now. But with that much, you have to, like, there's a difference in being confident, being cocky, and being fucking, like, delusional. That's a quote. And you thought you were coming seventh? Because I wasn't delusional, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm looked, not delusional. You look sick. What did you think wasn't good posing, about your... Posing, confidence actually was like the the NP the the IFBB and whatever the the league posted a photo of me right after I went on stage yeah man of the hour they put what does that mean confidence oh what I was like is it yeah but you that? don't well, I, I know well, I am went not, a participation bro, bro. award <laughs> I know most confident goes to Christian man Gizmo. of the hour I was like hey but that but that means is I had some presence in the room when I fucking went in that hour. Right, so that that was cool to hear. Cool They're to like, see. Confidence like, high, muscle mass, and confidence posing high, low. Posing <laughs> negative four, uh, size three out of ten. But no, there's things to work on for sure. But I mean, I what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> we, okay, you thought you were gonna place like seventh race yeah. when you go in. You were like down on yourself. But then when you go in, I'm assuming, as you can tell, I'm not a bodybuilder. Oh, I feel like when I'm in your backstage and you're pumping up, I'm not even, I'm literally like, I'm going to fucking eat these motherfuckers alive, bro. I'm really? literally thinking that. I'm literally like, there's no one in my fucking way. I, I'm just like, and, but I'm not looking at them. I'm just in my head, calm, but I'm going to fucking eat anyone in my way. Like like that, the, the whole way I'm back, the, the whole time I'm backstage, not even just pumping up. I'm backstage, headphones are on, hoodies on, just fucking in the back, like backs up against a, a corner of a room, and I'm just fucking staring for five hours. Okay, so your your confidence is medium when you go in, yeah. high when you're like in the shit because I've done everything I could. And then as soon as you when you go, when you go out on stage, if they don't put you right in the middle, does Ooh. it just shoot down the bottom? Yeah, bro. Yeah, and get this. So what happened at, at the second show? So the first one was a warm up show, got fifth. I was okay. Yeah. Second show is going to be the competition's pretty much equal, but I came in leaner. I came in bigger. I came in better posing. I was like, this is great. So I go in and then when you, for the front shot, you're lined up with all the other 10 people. Yeah. And then they could say turn to the back, but because they had all 10 of us in the line, there wasn't enough room for 10 people to turn to the back. And I saw up. that you're like fighting. For I was space. fucking pissed. I turned to the back and like, literally I'm like, and you're not supposed to like make a scene. Cause that'll just like deduct points. I would. Hey, well, but dude, and I, like, I, I gotta like, spread my fucking last. I'm fucking gonna try to fly away, <laughs> but yeah. I couldn't even open up my back. And then I moved to the front again, and then they called us off. So I didn't, they didn't even get to look at my back, which sucks. But that's my fault. I don't know if it'd be bad sportsmanship, but I mean, in the body and world, I mean, it. I'm sure it can happen, but it 99. Like, percent like If I was a more big of a deal person, competitor, they would have like spaced us out, had us go again looked at it, but I'm not. Let me, so like, I'm a small class. You know? in, in bodybuilding, if you don't get first call outs, like you're- You're done, go home. I, don't I, go home, so show up for the night show, but- Would know. it be bad taste to just, I would leave. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would be like, I'm not wasting anyone's time. But then when they call your number at the at night show, and then and they're like, to okay, get one, 20, just to come and pose, and you're not there, it's like, you think they're gonna give, the, just like, I don't even know who the judges are, but I wouldn't- respect a competitor who just walked out. You know what I mean? But it shouldn't be judged on if that person thinks you're a cool guy or a nice guy you're or humble right. guy. No, you're it right. should be you're, on you're right. you're how right. fucking jacked are you? You're right. Does anyone even fucking notice if you don't show up? I don't know. See, that's the bullshit about the politics on that. But I own a bodybuilding lease. You got to think about that. Because I, like, I need to encourage people to show up. 
Okay, so so let me ask, as someone who owns a bodybuilding league, if there was someone back there that was just this is a perfect like, example of us going at it. Like, look, like, <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so, so here's a scenario: you're hosting a bodybuilding show. All the all the coaches. Let's say there's a guy that's just rude to all the competitors. Is talking happens, down. Bro, it happens. So, so, but but but, so much at, but that shouldn't affect how they place. No, it doesn't. Does it though? It doesn't. I swear. Because usually, what if he goes to all the judges and was like, "You suck, you suck, you suck." If he goes to the judges, I mean, I guess you get kicked out. But But usually, in in this goes for like not just my organization, like Uh the SSC, Summer Shredding uh, Community, but also like IFBB, NBC. Like, I think they would confidently stand behind me when I say this. That like the judges truly have they're so detached from what the competitors are doing. They're so detached from like any politics that are happening backstage or anything that's like leading like like maybe they hear about the the shit or maybe they hear about oh aaron banks called it this and jeremy buendia blah 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 like what like that's the highest level but like at the end of the day when you're looking at this the people on stage i truly think that like this year the judges for the olympia for example did such a good job mm-hmm. with all the bullshit happening outside of the world the noise they were able to truly like justificate like justify i don't care if this guy's a fucking dick but he scores here. That's how it should be. This is how it should be. And it is like that. You know, you, you've asked me a couple of times, and I've only been the judge on... But um, like whoever get eighth place, even though he was hoping for first, still should better fucking have some sport and shit. Because Hadi Chupan, yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. that got second in bodybuilding, he's deaf. Right? He's deaf. Uh-huh. And, and he doesn't speak English. So he got second this year to Derek Lunsford. Right? And when he got second, he still like showed sportsmanship. Yeah. You know, you know took his photo. But then he walked off. Well, while the announcer was like, Hadi, uh, where are you going? Where are you going? Come back for a photo. But he didn't hear him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it looked so bad. So well, sportsmanship I, means a lot. I definitely, I think everyone should have good sportsmanship. I'm just more trying to like play the advocate of like, if someone was a dick, not to the point where they're like, should be kicked out of a show for being rude, yeah. but just, what are you, why are you sitting so far away? You gotta breathe, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think they're not even on camera. <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's wild of a sport of how it's so like, just, I think personal opinion, because that's why I can never be, you've asked me before to be judges on the show. And I've always just done like the transformation transformation. because I couldn't be, but if you can judge a transformation, you can judge everything else. No, because I would, I would look at someone and just go, yep, you're more jacked than that guy. You should win. But (laughs) so in our scorecards, so this is like, we have, everybody has a scorecard. Every competitor has a scorecard. Yeah. So you have like men's physique class a, their name, their number. And then what we did. I don't know what everyone else's scorecards look like, but this is what we did. We broke it down into four categories. So it says up top, like, okay, conditioning, like tr- pure conditioning, and you rate one to 10. Mm. And then you have, right, then you have muscle, like how big are they? Are they the biggest on stage? And I always start with the first guy. So if I'm judging, I look at the first guy on, st- on that class and I rank that a number, say a seven of, and, and then you add up, you know, symmetry or whatever, conditioning, size, stage presence is a big one. So like the confidence, the posing, are they shaking, getting fatigued when they're posing? Um, and you add these numbers up and then you're able to see like first, second, third, fourth, but that doesn't necessarily mean they win because then they go to comparison rounds. So then when they're like, that's individual routine, fine, but then you can have your first, second, third, fourth, but that can change depending on when you put them together. And, and then you move them around to first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Do you want to know why powerlifting is so much better than bodybuilding? Because <laughs> it's factual. It's just, yeah. <laughs> did they lift hit the weight <laughs> or did they not? Like, it's mm-hmm. so black and white. It's not yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because with bodybuilding, it's, oh shit, oh, like the judges could literally be 100%. like, what if I didn't look at each person with exact amount of time? Like, oh, I've, uh, that guy, oh, I didn't really look at him. Seven, I don't Bro, know. The head judge's position, like the job is probably one of the most stressful fucking, it really all matters to the head judge. They they have to decide, right? So they yeah. can have the key, but they have to make the call. I, I w- could never, will never, would never do a bodybuilding show mm. because I, I just, I, I, I either need to know if like I can lift the weight or I can't lift the weight, period, mm. period. Not like, does someone think I should be able to lift the weight? You know, how yeah, was my yeah. technique? Even though I failed, it's like, nope, I either hit it. Bro, guess how much I'm doing 275 for nowadays on incline bench. Bar uh, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this because I saw you drop it on your Ooh. chest. <laughs> you, the exact thing that happened to you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put on the screen. Go ahead and look at it. Holy. Yeah. Of, of what happened to you. 
the exact same thing happened to me. The exact, Christian. I'm talking. Incline? You, you never inclined. No, no, flat. My, mm. Yours is 275. Mine was 175 on flat. <laughs> mine was many years ago. I'll put mine on the screen. Okay. Yeah. But exact same. I'm, I'm talking. Do you remember I, if that's ever. I know I've hurt my chest benching before while you've been like, like spotting me and stuff. Has uh -huh. that ever happened to me? No, right? I don't think I've ever dropped the bar on myself. Uh, that yeah, you remember? You, that you remember? No, 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 no. Okay, no, I hurt my but, chest. But, but I'll tell you why it happened, because I know why it happened. Because the bar. No, the exact, I'm talking like how far you had it off your chest, the same thing with your wrists, mm, exact same bar. thing happened. But I want you to know, you took a couple days to go back to that weight, right? Yeah, so you took what, the same, you went I went next set 45 seconds later ah, okay, and hit that weight. Well, I just I just but it, I, you, know what it, you know what it was? It's because we, the bar, you had chalk on your hands. Yep. You had chalk on your hands. I had chalk on my hands. This is a way way back at uh, my college, and I think what happened is when it went down, and you go up, your wrists want to flex. The chalk made you hold the bar so so tight that your your wrist couldn't like move with it. So the bar like just it just like literally went just oh, goes. But when I saw the clip of like your wrist just flinching, same shit happened to me. Damn, would wrist straps sort of help that or no? I think if we just weren't little bitches. Yeah, well I felt strong. Well, I, I just done it for ten. Can you imagine if that I was halfway off her chest, bro? bro. We would die. Yeah. I mean, that happened to Hayden Schneider and shit. I, I've, I've, I never watched the clip. I've never watched the clip because I don't want, I don't, I, I never oh, I want to watch that. gym fails because when people are like, look Bro, at this person. That I got, felt that barbell, like I mm -hmm. felt it like into my spine. Fine. Christian, imagine if it was any further besides an inch off your chest when that happened, bro. You would be not and here. Harry was spotting me and, and Harry's right there editing some photos right now. But like, that was a lot. Like that was, it was too, it's that really, you got to be very conscious of who, one, who's spotting you, but two, is the, the person you're choosing, are you lifting a weight too heavy mm -hmm. for a single person? Doesn't matter if it's Harry at a buck 75 or if it's me at 215. Or if it's uh, fucking uh, Eddie Hall, it, yeah. whatever he weighs. Like, is it too much weight for your spotter to be able to lift off your chest in an emergency? Likely, the answer is yes. So likely you need people on the side. Christian, when I lift, when I was in- Like powerlifting. When I was in <laughs> Washington, D.C. and I used to lift at this balanced gym, I remember I used to lift late at night. There was a guy there. Is that the commercial one? That one that we went to? No, this is like the three-story one. I think I remember, I got sick there. We went in to DC? Yeah, I got sick because it was so cold in there. It was AC. Oh, maybe. You know, yeah, that's why. Anyway, I got sick. Anyway. there was this guy there that. So, have you ever seen the the West Side uh, the West Side bench Barbell? where it has like yeah, yeah. yeah? So there's no like platform for you to stand on behind it. Okay, mm -hmm. there was this guy there. He would put four twenty five on the bench press, and he would ask me to 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 spot him. <laughs> and I remember going through the. And again, I can't be like you're not. There's no platform, so you can't like have a. You're, I mean, I'm like upright rowing it, and I I remember in my head I was like. If this guy can't get the weight off, I can't get it off. Like yeah. I, I'm not gonna be. Able, what am I gonna do? And more if he drops it, because like a lot of times, like if you just hit a sticking point, it's different. Because like you can kind of like yeah. just like give a little bit. But if you drop, if no, something actually happens, he would have died. Yeah. yeah, like like I, yeah, yeah. We gotta be careful, all of us. You know. Mm -hmm. That's why I stopped powerlifting. Mm. I'm done. I think I'm gonna go to the Smith machine. Yeah. God, I'm getting old. We used to make fun of the Smith machine. I know. How are the ten year goals going? Good, man. Good. Um, you know, I was hoping you would ask about that because I think that like after year one, well, it's, it hasn't even been a year. It's almost, it's nine months. But after nine months, um, I made 10 year, 10 huge goals nine months ago on my 30th birthday. And do I think, you should ask me like if I think any of those are going to change. All right, hold on. Do you think any of your 10 year goals are going to change? I do. I do. I do. I do. You can't change them. <laughs> You said I said I'd do it. Wait, did you? What are you, what are you making them like? I don't less know. of a giant no, accomplishment. Know. Just shits happening that some of those goals that they alter a little bit, man. But um, I think I'm way. I didn't even know I could like be this like content and happy. Um, I've been off stimulants for like 90 days now. Like pre? Mm -mm. Adderall. The mm. 90 days completely. I was prescribed Adderall for a long time. ADHD and shit and like. Got really dependent on it in short, you know that in like 90 days. Well, it's been since my show, so it's like, have you ever talked about that? No, I'm and actually, I want to, I'm doing a whole YouTube video on it because I want to go deep into it. But like 90 days or nothing, like having some caffeine here and there, and that's it. Some alcohol here and there, some alcohol, maybe it's time for another one. I don't know. <laughs> in a minute, <laughs> god damn it, dude. Okay, I, I do want to talk. Let's not talk about too much. I do want to go deep into that because it's a that's like my biggest, darkest secret. In a way, 
because I made it my biggest, darkest secret. And I want to talk about that more, but I've been off and I'm feeling fucking great. I feel like Adderall is something. So I've, I've probably consumed five Adderall my entire life. Like just, I remember the first time I ever took it when I was like, I was like in college and I was like, oh, this will help you study. I was like, all right, I took it. And I had like a bad reaction. I ended up throwing up. I don't know if I, cause I didn't have food or something. Oh shit. Yeah. So I remember walking back from the library, just puking in the street. Like wow. imagine if your first time taking Adderall in college, same scenario, you like, you were so distracted all the time. You never did that great in school. But that is like, me. Yeah. But but you took an Adderall and you were able to get a good grade. That shit's addictive, bro. Because because you start to, you can start easily start to correlate something happening to giving credit to Adderall, right? And and, and that's what essentially with sort of those little moments that started with studying for a college stupid quiz, sort of like then being told by a doctor like you it's okay to like you need this uh -huh. right and then you're taking this and then you're like fuck i think i need more right because like the doctor yeah they're not doing anything wrong but in your head you're like damn i kind of need that right and you're building this dependency and then you're just like fucking we're, at, we're I, I can't do it without adderall in your head you're saying that i think i think my mindset on like obviously this is kind of contradictory kind of contradictory uh because you know when i'm when I have pain, I take an ibuprofen. When I, you know, I, I, I rely on the medicine. I think medicine works. I'm, I, I, I believe in medicine. I believe in science, right? But with something like Adderall, dangerous, bro. Well, I guess in my head, I always thought that I was like, I like for me to perform better and focus, like a pill. Like I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than this freaking pill. Like and that's that sentence that you just said. That's what I like. I don't know if you saw the uh, series on Netflix called Painkillers. Mm -mm. It's about the um, Oxycontin, right? The whole, like, the story of that, how it developed in the 90s, 2000s, and how it became, like, whatever. But there's this one scene where the main actor, he gets hooked on Oxycontin. They use him as, like, the poster boy. Is that a pain? That's a pain killer. It's a pain, pain, okay. pain killer. Um, and essentially, the almost like the opposite of Adderall, I guess, but it's not the opposite. That's a bad analogy. But uh, essentially, he uh, it gets so addicted to this stuff... That he's like, and no one's watched. It's like middle of the night. He needs a pill. Can't find it. He's out. He starts like looking through his house, looking in the couch, starts like looking around the fridge, moving the fridge, making a mess, making a scene, tearing the part, the house apart to find a pill. Cause he, he sees there's a pill underneath the fucking thing. All right. And his, his wife comes in. She's like, what are you doing? Like, what's, what's, what are you doing? Stop. That scene, though, is like so much more dramatic than anything in my life has ever happened. I felt that in my head. Were you addicted? I was addicted, hundred percent. Because you thought you be, couldn't be, do be, something. Being honest with myself, like I, yeah, like I, I would think I needed an Adderall to go do something. Like I think I need an Adderall to go to this podcast, and I didn't. I don't. Yeah. But so I would take one. So you became reliant on this. So reliant, bro. So re so reliant, and for no reason, it would just make me spin around on the same fucking topic for so long. I've 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 I don't always want anyone to take this shit. Whenever. Uh, and, and this might sound stupid, uh, like most of the things I say. I've never really like I, I can. I've never in my mind. I, I've never been addicted to something. And I always thought like, how could someone be addicted to something? Whether it be smoking cigarettes, whenever like, oh, I, you know, I'm trying to, you I'm really, trying to you've quit. You've never been addicted to anything. Well, see, and this is, I think this is gonna just sound, games. This is gonna sound so stupid, bro. Uh, so like with cigarettes, I'd always be like, when people are like, oh, I'm, I'm trying. No, 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 no. When people are like, I'm trying to quit. In my head, I would just go. Like just stop. Like what do you what do you mean? Like I understand maybe when you have maybe on hard drugs like withdrawal, right? Um, or I I can't understand. But with cigarettes, I would I I couldn't wrap my head around addiction yeah. because I was just like I just just stop doing it. Like what do you mean you, you need it? I almost I, I touched your foot and I was like holy shit! Did I just hit no, his no, toe. No 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 no! Oh, I protect no. it. <laughs> but oh God, this is gonna sound so dumb. I the way that I can understand how addiction can be a real thing. <laughs> mm. And this is not a plug, but I'm serious when I say candy. If you there need it. You need if it. there's I candy, need I physically cannot stop myself. You start salivating. If no one's around, yeah. like when Taylor goes away for like yeah. a modeling trip and I'm at home, I will put sour strips out and I will just stand there and I can't stop. I can't just have You're a bag. You're a genuine guy, Max, I'll tell you. Cuz a lot of people that's fucking drugs. 
<laughs> I know, and, 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 and that's and, and it's like it doesn't correlate. But like yeah. I, that's how my connection because I, I, I'll just be like, I need a little bit more. I'm done. I'll put it away and I'll eat the last one. I go, I'm just gonna get a little bit more and I take it out and I'll eat until I'm ill, like until I'm ill. You do the same thing with fucking Adderall or any addictive you know. shit. Well, I'm so it's like essentially like for me also I've, I've I'm the same way as you to where like I've never it, the whole timeline where I I was prescribed Adderall. Uh -huh. It's like. That whole time, or I, I guess, I don't know, I just, I feel, you just said, like, nothing's stronger than me. I'm in charge. Like, I was saying that to myself, but still taking Adderall. Yeah, because in my head, I'm like, I'm like this, this thing doesn't control so, me. So after my show, because I was having to take so much to even feel a fucking thing. What is a lot? Like, what is oh, normal and I what's a lot? I really don't want to say. I was taking too much. Well, a lot. More than I was prescribed. What, what's like a normal dose of, of of it? I was I was prescribed ninety milligrams a day. Okay, that's a lot. That is a lot. What is that? Like one pill? Or can, can that's that be three one? pills, thirty milligrams a day. Okay, seven days a week, prescribed. Okay, prescribed. That's a that's like a, that's a lot, bro. But I was taking like a lot more than that. Yeah, and and happy to say like I'm not taking. What I uh, touched it? It's still in my house. Yeah. Haven't grown the balls to trash it, but I haven't touched it. There's steps to this. There's, I, there's, well, there's step. Yeah, I'm like that's expensive. What was? Do you remember the the moment that you're go like that's I, way. I don't need this or like yeah. It, it was really like it was going it, especially like I was competing this year uh -huh. and I was like God, I was having to take so much. And I was like I don't even fucking need it. Why am I taking it? And it just sort of really started building up like during my prep because I was like I literally don't feel this. Why am I just taking excess? I was already like feeling so shitty and just like and I was watching that painkiller show mm. and I was like fuck that I ain't taking this shit no more this is it I'm done I'm taking too much I'm done and I've been done so it was a it was a self decision yeah bro and it's like a self decision did I let it go on too many years yeah yeah but like to my defense I guess to my defense like I was fucking prescribed bro like it's hard when like you're you're, you're just giving it to yeah, you yeah you're in the the thought that like this shit's been given being given to kids and being given to like just to like hone, like hone them in, almost like shut them up, make them focus. See, like, it's wild because in my head, I'm like, it can't be doing that much. Like, oh, bro, I'm like, all because when I took one, I was like, okay, I, I focused a little bit, but like, I, in my head, I'm like, it can't be that amazing it's of a not thing. Because I think when you're so unfocused, you're so all over the place, when you are focused on one thing, you feel like, wow. But you realize, like, wow, being focused on that one small fucking thing has, halt has, has halted me from like doing anything productive. Like anything. So it almost like I'd love to see where I'd be without Adderall. I think, <laughs> like, I think, and I've never, I've never, I, I got prescribed um, like Ritalin and Paxil same as thing. a kid. Same thing. As a kid. Same Cause shit. my parent, like my parents probably like this, but you need something. Right. And I remember I had a bad, like I ended up throwing up from it, um, which is funny. Cause That's I threw up weird. Yeah. yeah you're probably I threw up as a kid and then, so I stopped doing it, but I've never gone in to get like a uh, ADHD uh, evaluation. It's, a, it's an iPad test. Oh, literally, but, you, you fucking choose A, B, or C. It's like, do you get distracted when others are talking? Yeah. Here's Adderall. I'm like, that's ridiculous. In my mind, I think I'm probably the absolute best candidate for something like that. But I've never, I've never just been like me, me too. And I, I was like, wow, I am literally ADHD. Yeah, literally, right. And, and I'm not you, just trying to get it to fucking get Adderall. Like. Yeah, no, and like that's what that's when I, when I went to the doctor because the first times I took it, I bought from college. Like I bought from whoever was selling them. It wasn't like a. But then I was like, oh wow, I really did great with that. Maybe I should like take that all time. I think mm -hmm. I, sh I should justify it. Then you go to the doctor, you take a. Fucking it changes iPad who test. you are. It changes. It mutes you. Yeah. It numbs you. I don't know if you can tell the last few months. Hopefully, you can see a little bit like a difference in my like how I'm speaking, and just a little bit difference of like. I'm sleeping <laughs> like I'm sleeping a lot just completely consistently I feel awake I feel well, bro calm. You, you would go and I think people think I've, I've I keep saying I we said this because we talked about the few podcasts I've done with you I hadn't slept when I say I think people think that I'm like exaggerating when I would come to you when you were building alpha land and you were like I haven't slept for the past you know 40 hours or 36 hours mm -hmm. like it wasn't an exaggeration. It, it was like literally. That was the most it'd ever really get to. Would That's be like, crazy. But yeah, it was fucking nuts, bro. And like, I say, I was like literally like just almost like I didn't know what to do, man. Because I think that for so long I was 
you know, I, you jump into something, bit off more than I could chew. Now I'm 100% okay saying that because it's done. Yeah. Uh, you can say that once you finish. You can say that you bit off more than you can chew once you finish it. When you're doing it and you're in it, you better shut your fucking mouth. Period. Did you know I've never... I, the only time I've ever stayed up like an all-nighter <laughs> yeah. was I was playing Grand Theft Auto 3 <laughs> And I stayed up for over 24 hours to play this game. And I remember this specifically. Uh, I was at dinner with my mom, my stepdad, and like my, my stepbrothers at the time. And uh, I literally fell asleep at dinner. Like I was, I was just, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time. I've never, I've never, I've never pulled an all nighter in college. That's I've good, never pulled bro. an all nighter in good. business. That's good. I get nine hours of sleep every day. That's So does Heidi. That's great. That's, and I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the sleep train now. But I don't regret what I fucking got done. You know, I think that's important to say too, because like, like I, I, I mean, would I, how would I do it differently? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, would do it way differently. Obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously. But I got it done, mm -hmm. and it was uncharted territory. Now everyone's doing the same. They're trying to kind of. I'm not gonna lie. I see a huge uh, improvement, change in who you are as a person, just because. Thanks, before it was like, before it was like when even I, as someone as your close friend, would approach you, I felt like I was uh, like, you were just kind of like, all right, when is Max going to fucking get out of here? Like, when is he going to like stop being in the room? Kind of antsy. Yeah, just I, I felt like I was like impeding on like you working rather mm -hmm. than just me being like a. Friend. Oh, cool! Max is here. Like, yeah, let me just stop for a minute, like yeah. kind of thing. It was I'm sorry like, for that, man. No, it, no, it, I, I, I get it, and it's gr even better. I mean, it's it's great to see you in the position that you're in now. I, you're just even just I can tell from like your personality of how you're just more goofy, mm -hmm. more like jokey, laughing, smiling, and because like that wasn't the Christian a year, or two years ago. Oh, for three years, it wasn't, and you, you made a lot of like. Can you imagine Heidi dating that for three years, two years? It's a strong woman. That's a strong woman, bro. Yeah. yeah, and to, to like stick through it and to see mm -hmm. like the she was at a breaking point too. I bet because I mean I mean bro like you get into something like that you're supportive. Heidi's all your friends are and the people that care about you are supportive and like I think a lot of times people on social media will be like when you're building your own way and building your own path your own business like you're not gonna have support and I, like yeah maybe when I left college like my mom wasn't supportive and that was hard okay but like I had support. I had you, I had Heidi, I had Shaw Lee, yeah. right? I had people and going into the Alphaland project, but then just like seeing it over time with COVID and everything, how much it was just really, really like, that was a fucking tough time. But I, I, I mean, I'm thankful for the friends that stuck around through it. Yeah. You know, so. I wonder what everything would look like, like right now, if you didn't, like what if you were in this mindset then do you think everything would have mm -hmm. elevated as much? I don't think I would have built Alpha Line. Really? You would have just had like Alpha, Alpha Elite 2.0, like a, a bigger warehouse gym kind of thing? That's a tough one, bro. Because like, remember, I, you remember before Alpha Land, I was looking at property. I was looking at like mm -hmm. the 24 hour fitness to buy on 59. I was looking at the dialysis. I think I would have, the answer, I think I would have built a really amazing fucking gym. That would have been, been Alpha Land. It, it wouldn't have been Alpha Land, but it, been, it would have been a single gym that would have been in a great spot that would have probably done similar revenue or if not or the same revenue but i think that it wouldn't have kind of impacted everything else that yeah. it kind of has if i didn't give my whole soul to it yeah i think that would be the difference a good business or something that's bigger than your name and bigger than yourself that's well, gonna last forever it's, it's kind of shitty how you had to get to this point but i'm glad that you're in a better place now than you know you were and a huge change that you've done is this man built a million followers on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, bro, what's crazy is... You're a super... You super disagree with this point. Oh, I very much disagree. I need to piss. Can I piss real quick? Get another shot? Continue the conversation? Yep. Bam, bam, bam. Be right back. <laughs> wow, you really are sweaty. I know. I didn't even know it was sweaty. I even keep this at 68. It's 68 degrees in here. sweaty? I, actually, now I see your pits. It's actually gross. Yeah. Are you going to hold videos like that? Probably. Bro, you've been so sweaty your entire life. I know, man. <clears throat> I feel like I'm not sweating, but I'm actually sweating. <sighs> Anywho, you deleted a million channel video. And to be honest. What? Deleted a, my... I didn't million, delete it. Okay, you, you've... Stop posting. Transitioned. 
and you're only saving it. Obviously, the videos are, are still there, but like when you post the video, I was like, oh, here we go, another clickbait. I didn't even I didn't even know that you were going to do that. I mm. didn't know. You filmed I, it with, I decided when I was, well, you filmed it with your iPhone in a parking lot. I decided, well, I've been thinking about it for a while and then for like months, especially during prep, because like uh, really what sparked it was that I, this was the first prep or summer shredding that I was doing videos. I was back on YouTube where the, and really I was doing everything the same as previous years. Every other day upload, 12 o'clock, putting effort in the title thumbnail, being sure there was some relevance in the video to the title. And it wasn't just clickbait like 2017, 2018, right? But, and even doing topic videos, more topic videos where I'm actually covering a topic, blah, blah, blah. But they just, bro, the, the channel with a million subs just like really wasn't, it's almost like the subs felt dormant. And I feel like they were only getting maybe, I don't know, 15 to 25,000 views in 24 hours. Why do you think that was? I think over time, just burnout, me like program, me almost like training my, my viewer over, and also 10 years, people aren't watching necessarily, like people aren't still watching YouTube videos, they might not be, but I also think I really burned out my demographic by, or my viewers by like clickbait, honestly, too much for too long. Yeah. So I think that like the combo of that just led to a really not engaged channel. And I think that removing the fluff, for me it was like 950,000 subs. <laughs> that's a big, <laughs> that's nine, a big four, fluff, bro. Nine, but it, and not even fluff. Like those people may fuck with you, but like they just hadn't in a while. And so for start with starting a new channel, now I've already got like fifty uploads yeah. in the new channel. Almost well, or maybe forty without reels. And then like I've got or YouTube Shorts, and I've got like I'm doing fifteen to twenty five k views a day, fresh. And I'm not fucking. It's like just easy. I'm not thinking. I'm titling like I, my first time squatting in four years. Yeah, the number two out of ten. What? And it's like, and it's, it's better. I'm, and I'm not stressed. Well, I think the other audience, I think what happens and they probably do the same for me is that now it's like, they're tired of the content, but now they still subscribe just in case some dramatic shit happens. Mm. Like just in case it's, we broke up. Yeah. Uh, I snapped my leg. Easy mill. Alpha easy land's mill. failing. <laughs> like you didn't put, I snapped my leg. You should do that. Did you? I broke my, no, dude, I, I, I've put like, I'm, I had to go to the emergency room and it, I don't know. <laughs> why, why do you think viewership has changed over the years for us? Because you were once the clickbait king. You mm -hmm. were, I mean, we were both crushed on YouTube and, you know, I've, I've come to peace with like a, a, all of it at this point, but mm -hmm. uh, like, like. Bro, I think you have the strongest following out of anybody. Still. It's because we're power lifters. No, still. Period. Yeah. Ah, hmm. I think we have a strong potato nation. Yeah. yeah, you do. Like, bro, not a lot of people or brands or anybody can go and I'm going to hype you up for a sec. Thanks. But like, you're just so fucking consistent. You can't stop it. You can't stop your, your progress because you're just dedicated to being consistent. You know what it is? I'm afraid of stopping. You're afraid of stopping. <laughs> but you know what? Behind fear is fucking bravery, bro. That's like, that's like the truth of just like the consistency and everything. Like, because you're scared. That's what's leading to your success. Because I'm terrified of waking up and having everything gone one day, that's why I'm successful. I'm scared it's just going to get taken away. I, believe, I never grew up with anything. I believe that's the, uh, as Rob Lipset would say, that's the, I didn't know until he explained to me the like scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. Mm. Whereas people with scarcity think, uh, they, wake, they essentially live in fear of like everything's going to go away. So that's what drives me. And then other people with the <laughs> ab abundance is you have too much or everything. What do you do with it? It's well, it's kind of like, like matter. everything I do, like, like I'm going to, like, I'm going to keep being successful because I'm successful because of who I am. I'm going to keep it. It's, it's a positive like and, thinking you're going to always be successful because I guess I that's sort of true to an extent. Like I, I don't have, but it's not like cockiness. It's almost like, I have no doubt if you cleared my account right now, cleared, took everything away yeah. that I could build back up. I think people assume you have the abundance mindset because I have been whenever anyone and I know I question your decisions a lot on camera, which people think I'm just fucking anti it when really I'm just not I'm not that sucking you, your dick. Does that make you not want to do podcasts with me sometimes? No, because I understand our friendship. Yeah, like it doesn't bother me. At and all. it's just like I would hope that if I had a idea, people would play devil's advocate and question it. And because I and, do have people come to me after some podcasts that we do, and they're like, "Bro, Max is being so negative to you," and I'm just like, "No, he's not. He's just being Max." Well, and it's like, I'm like, guys, I'm not on, like, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit me to do that. I'm not on your payroll. I like, there's, why would I, 
if I have a, a doubt of what you're doing or even just like, yeah, hey, me, did, hey, did you, you think about this? I think it's my duty as a bud to bring it up. Yeah. Just like with a logo. I was like annoyed when you told me that I should change my fucking logo. I was annoyed when you didn't give me the manufacturer. I, that, you know, and then look we at We talked Alfie. about that. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I have always with anyone, whether you've started anything, whether even when I have doubts about, well, I mean, there's a million times you've talked about, I mean, years and years ago of like potentially like, oh, I might kind of spin off and do my own supplements or I might do mm -hmm. all these different things, whether no matter what, would I doubted it or not, not doubted it, but I had questions about like, I wouldn't do that kind of thing. But I've always said to everyone, I was like, Christian has the like the golden touch for a lot of stuff and not in like a yeah. like lucky him, but it's like, when that man says he's going to do something, just persistent. Look at Alphaland, bro. Look at the, the the photos that you showed me. Be like, dude, this building, this this shitty old building that I'm spending a bunch of money on. This is what's going to look like. And I'd be like, that's kind of wild. And then flash forward two years later, it looks exactly like yeah, that. But that pressure, that pressure, that I uh, that what you just said, like you're a diamond, bro. You 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 do well I, under pressure. I do, except basketball, bro. Basketball, <laughs> just don't pass me the fucking ball. <laughs> there's it's crazy because you play a lot of basketball. I do, but if there's pressure, I just fucking choke that, artist. That's how I am at Fortnite. I've been playing choke Fortnite artist. for six years, and as if soon you're like as in the last one oh, live, oh, just I'm like, screwing up. I'm screwing up. <laughs> yeah. I'm screwing up every time, bro. You know, I think that like I want to go back to the you, what? What did you call it? You called it that. You said I'm a type of person that is uh, abundance mindset. Yeah, like I'm not. You have the golden touch? I think you that... You a small wiener? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that the abundance mindset stuff, like, I literally have a fear in this underlying thing in my stomach that just tell like, I'm scared I'm just not going to have the... Like, one, I won't be... I'm just scared it's going to go away, bro. I, I agree with I you. I didn't grow away with shit. I didn't grow up with shit. So it's like when some opportunity comes to you, and maybe this is looking back, like reflecting, maybe this is why I kept taking Adderall for so many years. But I think that when, some, when, when success shows itself to you, when you haven't seen that, for me, that was in the shape of grades. That was in the shape of A's instead of like fucking like, you know, C's or B's, right? I was, Holy shit, success. Why did I get there? Oh, well, maybe because. But then you, you. But then people kind of. You start expecting that A again. I'm gonna. I need to hit the A again. You hit the A again. So whatever I did to get there, I need to keep fucking doing. Yeah. Right. Keep fucking doing. Keep fucking doing. And you end up just, literally like, I don't have a golden touch. I don't. And and I think Aunt uh, Charlie's um, aunt had told Marco that also. This is Christian. He has a golden touch. As soon as you shake his hand, shit turns to gold. And it's like, it's funny. But it's not. Yeah, but to everyone, everything you've done has been a monumental Everything hit. they've seen that I've done, right? Because it's like everything that I think of, everything that I, every day it just feels like small L's many times. Most days do feel like small L's, like just like shit's going wrong. But then you, like you're, but, and, and that's just like the daily when you're looking at the small yeah. you know, ones, but the big ticks are like forward motion. So it's like, yeah, everything looks like it's going great. But it's like you just have to be okay with the daily struggle, I think. I I one thousand percent agree that like the way you think everything's gonna go away, that's how I, I live my life every day. And I don't think it's a good way to live. Like, no, it's like not, yeah. because I I I keep thinking that no matter how much success and that's like every time I get a new warehouse or sour strips, right? Yeah. This big commitment. It's growing month over month, we're growing, whatever. But in my head, I'm like, just with my luck, when I sign this bigger warehouse. It's gonna be. It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down because there's no way this can keep on going this well. And it will go down sometime. Oh yeah, no. You should be prepared. Oh, there'll be days when we have a uh, one or two like random wholesale orders when we normally have like ten or something, and I'll be like, "That's it. Yeah, that's it. It was a nice ride. That's it. It's over." Bro, there's days on like like leading up to Black Friday and like the October month where I'm like, "What the fuck is going on with Alfleet traffic? Where is everybody? What, 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 what's happening?" But then it's like Black Friday happens. You're like, "Oh, <laughs> there they are." It's like that. It's just it took a little bit, and, and a lot of times it can like be like that. But a lot of times you do have a smaller year. A lot of times you are you're not going to constantly go up. Like I don't think we'll we'll hit more th this year than we did last year. Is that a bad thing? No. Right, when you really look at like, okay, what were my margins that year? Did I stretch us to get to that 
hundred million yeah, the, revenue. The goal, public doesn't shit. care about your net margin. margin. No, they don't <laughs> care, bro. They, yo, that's going down. That that ain't it anymore. That's not hot. It's like okay, but I'm in it for the long run. Well, so just fucking watch. To just put it into perspective, so people can wrap their head around it, is that it's like you st- you're. Your aspirations and your expectations just keep scaling as your business scales. Yeah. And like with, with Ever Ford and oh, I mean, yeah. even That's Sour Ships, but Ever Ford, like we've never in the history of Ever Ford had a launch that has done like a Black Friday or anything that's done like a million dollars. Yeah. Because I think that's an absurd number, crazy, right? But for you, if a, if a Black Friday did $4 million, you'd be like, that's terrible. That's yeah. terrible. We're going under. So your expectations of because like, my costs or because my expenses yeah. or because you really put your shit out there for like, like but we're, versus like, I would be ecstatic about four million if I only had a million in cost. Mm-hmm. But if I have fifteen million cost, no, I ain't happy with sixteen million. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's all relative, and it's like I a lot of times we choose to put ourselves in the spot in these like empty shoes to see if we could fill them again. And that's what ordering inventory is. It's like, okay, I'm fucking stroking my ego a little bit. Let me put in these numbers and we just had a good fucking launch. I'm going to use that data to order this next thing I'm working on. So in nine months or 10 months that drop, like we're going to have enough clothes. You're trying to be smart, but ultimately you're stroking your fucking ego and you end up playing more bets, like trying to be smart than you do trying to be conservative. And what people don't realize is that by placing bets on the conservative bets, by placing your money there, you have to find the balance. to like having the stock, but versus like being able to have the margin. Cause when you're ordering, you're going to have the margin. The more you order, the more you say goodbye to your margin, the more you, you risk that margin is getting smaller and smaller because you're with leftovers. You're with sales. You have to put things on discount. So it's like, it's a really fine line of seeing where you're at in the timeline of your business, where you're at with your customer versus where you're at with like what you're able to, to margin. Right. Cause I, I really do think that when you have too much, that was, that was 2023, 2022 for us. We had too much. I was able to hit a hundred million, but we, because we had too much shit, I was able to discount. We had to push our sales up and it wasn't a healthy hundred million. So might be a, uh, you know, a, a weird topic to discuss, but another like one of these or a shot. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to go get you another energy drink. No, that's right. Shot. You want a shot? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, are you, so, so I, you're kind of alluding that you're, I, I think for the longest time you wanted Alphalete to be like the the biggest company in the world, a bill, a, like a billion dollar company. Like I think I chased, not, I don't think, I never publicly said I want a billion dollar brand. I, I wanted the hundred million very publicly. That was a number where I wanted to hit. And I honestly, I think I got to credit Ben Francis <laughs> for Gymshark. Because mm-hmm. when they put the hundred million dollar number out publicly, I was like, yo, that's a goal right there. That was like, what, three years ago, four years ago, they, hit, they put that number out. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, Gymshark, I'm coming. No, just be honest. Did like, you think everything, everyone was a competition? I thought Gymshark was like the main honcho and I wanted to try to get to that level mm-hmm. for a while. Right. But then you realize like, that's a whole different business than my business. That's a whole different business in Young LA. That's a whole different business in Anaka than Ember Fullworth and Buff Bunny. Right. And then you really like, what's up, dude? <laughs> you got to, yeah, let's take a shot. All right, dude. Okay. Out of energy drink, so. <laughs> I need a chaser. Mm. I have to go work out after this. It's kind of a lot of shots. Three, three or four. Three. You're the one that's requested all of them. <gasps> so, I, I guess the, the the question is like, are you are you not trying to scale? I want to make more profit. Okay. So top line, you're less concerned about at the short less concerned term. With top line. Not at all concerned with top line. Strictly concerned with margin. How does that like mess with your head at all? It, it doesn't until I, it was clear, like after meeting with my accountants after last year and paying the tax for 2022. How much did you like? 10 million. It's the same number that I predicted last podcast, but it, it was accurate. 10 million. So I paid in tax mm. and um, moment of silence. <laughs> I think you forgot the question again. Yeah, bro. Fuck 10 million. Like that's, that's so much cash, bro. That like, 
that's so much cash for a cloth. And what I'm learning is clothing brands are very, very, and every like Kevin O'Leary and all these motherfuckers say it, there ain't no money in clothing. There's no margin in clothing. There's no real take home with clothing is a constant fucking, well, the bigger you get, the more you want to scale. Like I said, the more margin you say goodbye to, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were most profitable and we were, I want to say, I may have profited more when we did 40 million. I think, yeah, definitely profited more when we did 40 million than we did 100 million. Wild. What do you think, what do you think, like, if you had to, if, if you had to give, like, I don't want to say, like, advice, but if you had to give, like, like Can I say one more thing? Yep. I think, like, how I just said that uh, 40 million, 100 million, you should, you need to strive for whatever your business is, whatever you're doing, for a healthy margin. A healthy margin is going to be, I'm just going to spit balls and numbers out my ass. I think a healthy margin is between 15 to 30 percent. 15 to 30 percent. If you fall under 15 percent, a lot of industries like food, a lot of industries like like like, like those are harder to get percent. Mm -hmm. A lot of like brick and mortar businesses, you're looking at a 10 to 12 percent yeah. margin, right? Now, if you can, and we finish, so everybody like I don't, bro, I don't give a fuck if this shit's public. This is like confidential shit, like with Alfleet, but we ended at an 11 percent margin in 2022, right? So at 11 percent margin which the previous year was higher. Previous year was higher. Pre every year, my revenue's going up, margin's going down. So what do we need to do? Tighten up, cut the extra fat. And your costs so, are going and, up. And the costs are going up. So hold my fucking ego, shut it up, order less volume, and, and re-look at the way we market in our marketing program with our athletes and stuff, and look at how we need to become desired again. You get, you're desired by being fucking hard to get. And that's what we're going to be in 2020. How do you think, Four, I, I think everyone wants to just continue to grow, 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 grow. Do you think your mindset has changed from? Grow your margin, not your revenue. You think? Yep. So it's like, it does it, like how it much money matter. is in your pocket? Yeah, that's all that matters, right? That's all that's ever mattered, isn't it? Well, I, do you think. But then you hear others doing bigger than you and yeah, you're like, ego, ego, ego. And then it's just not it. So are you like trying to say you're like, openly fine with getting smaller, 100%, slowing down athlete, hundred percent, because if I slow it down, eventually when, when everything fucking finds its way, it's, it's, it's place, then we'll blow way past a hundred fucking mil. Yeah. Way past it. When you organically do it, how it needs to be fucking done, then it's going to come back. And that's like 2025, 2026. How do you deal with like people who would have like a, like Oh shit! Still in stock. It's going down. Like even though you have this master plan in your head of like a strategy of like the next five years, how to like oh we need to pull back, get, make more profit, yeah, yeah. restructure, focus to push past this mm -hmm. like point that like we got to. We hit this big milestone, one hundred million dollars, but we sacrificed so much. We barely made. And he sacrificed Christian Guzman. <laughs> yeah. To do that. Yeah. So you get me back, fucking focused. How much is that worth? We don't know. The value there, you don't know. That's you can't put a dollar on it because you you don't know what that's worth alone. Getting a fully rested fucking like me, ready to go do anything new, right? Like that's a huge value. Yeah. So I don't know. How? Uh, I mean, I I know you've you've seen it with your your YouTube channel about people. I don't want to use the word criticizing, but like commenting about your like mental state. You know, I, obviously the the last podcast we talked about when you had that like kind of like the scatterbrain video when people were kind of worried about you, but I still, I feel like people now are still like worried about your health, the way people comment about, you know, your weight. What, yeah. The weight. weight you went like, how, how does that like affect your mental state? Does this look like someone that's yeah. worried about the comment section? <laughs> so sweaty armpits and shit. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate my people for having my back. Yeah. I think that under underneath every, every, I don't want to say every comment. Most comments are some fucking truth. So it's like, holy shit, he gained 50 fucking pounds. No one should gain 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. It's a fact, right? Did people know, like, one, I got, like, I got off Adderall at the same time that had a big impact on my water weight and shit? No. Do they know that, like, like, like there's a lot of factors that I didn't feel comfortable talking about and shit, but, like, ultimately, like, none of that shit matters, man. It's yeah. like, because I'll just prove them wrong by like showing 
in whatever month's time or week's time, the water goes away. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. It's going to come. I, I feel like you've always been that type of person that like, All in. yeah, well, no, it, well, it's like you, you'll get a lot of criticism of people and you're so good at pushing out the noise because you know what's going to happen in X amount of time that you're just like, yeah. you know, the vision, you, like, you know, and just like you just said, like, guys, like they don't understand all these things that are going on, but I understand that in a couple of weeks, like watch me, like I'll like watch me yeah. get better, improve. Bro, this watch fits me again. This didn't fit me two weeks, three, three weeks ago. That was literally choking me. Bro, I hate, Look. I hate when my like $50,000 watch doesn't fit my fucking wrist, man. Yeah. You know, this is the one thing I bought for me this year. This I splurged. This is the one thing Christian bought for not not the one thing Christian bought. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Christian bought me this. I, I've always said a friend. I don't think I've ever said that you bought me this mm. this watch because what, I promote. Was it your third? Was your birthday? Oh yeah, it was like the first year I moved. Sour strips birthday? Your no, first no, no. Year? This is like the first. It was like as soon as I moved to Texas. It was like six months before my birthday. You're like, oh yeah, bro. You know why? I bought you something, but I, I can't wait to give it to you. I, I knew anyway. you wanted. He wanted an Omega so bad. And, and they were so, I had Maddie at the time, our current event, uh, she works at Mercy on events right now at Alfland, the blonde Madison, remember her? She was so, I had her looking for that fucking watch for so, calling all the Omega stores. Yeah. She found one and, and it, for months, like months and months and months, she found one. I said, buy that shit. And then and she bought it. And then I was like, bro, I got a gift for you. I ain't going to wait six months. <laughs> I've been working for this. So here you go. It this was like came, a random it, time. It, it came out of nowhere. And it was more like, I, this is a gift that I would have never bought myself. I would have never bought yeah. a, a watch like this. It's yeah. just not. Anything, I wish I was but, like that. But <laughs> it is. It is my favorite watch, and it also means a lot. Like I'll never get rid of this watch yeah. ever. Um, I did put like a ten dollar Amazon band on it on here. But what did like, it come with that? Like originally, uh, a, a leather band. Brown. But I realized, like, yeah, yeah, no, a beautiful band. But like the problem is that. I would only wear it when I'd go out and stuff. Yeah. So I put this kind of you used sporty to wear that, band. That, that leather shit all the time. We well, go I love out. It. He had his chinos, mm -hmm. button down, and the Omega. Yeah, yeah that was the look. And well, so I was like, I gotta get him. I watch. can't rock these like the, the link. The, yeah, let me try that on, dude. This is a Daytona. Like the, the, Jody, so I, Jody, Jody, I, Jody High Roller Daytona. I bought this because after I bought Heidi's ring, she doesn't. Well, she knows this now, but I bought this because um, dude, this is heavy, heavy. How much does this watch cost? Mm. Okay, I'll, how about this? Lot. Is it over or under twenty five thousand dollars? <laughs> oh my god, bro! That is so much money for a freaking watch. But dude, th this is heavy. Thank God you're so strong, because like, do you like the light blue face with the brown? Oh yeah, no, it's beautiful. F fits the outfit good, yeah. It does fit the outfit, dude. That's that's a fucking. It's a beautiful a watch. Piece. But I bought it because after buying Heidi's ring, <laughs> I bought it in You're March. Like, then I'm broke. Yeah, well, I was like, man, like fuck, like I, I kind of want something. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I got myself this before I gave her the ring. So she just sees me buying this like expensive ass watch, but it's beautiful. It's a piece that's going to be worth so much. It's not going down. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but who care. cares how much it's worth? You're not going to sell it. Like you're not. Yeah, gonna... exactly. It's mine. Are you someone that like something I was thinking about the other day? Uh, so I got my, I got my, um, the watch is 113. Shut the, f no, that's a hundred thousand dollar watch. They go for like 127, but I got it for 107. I got oh, it. I would have never guessed anything were close to that. Yeah. Oh my God. That's fucking wild that's sick that's <laughs> sick i had i would have thought i maybe literally fit. wore it because i was trying not to wear the gold one to not be fucking like extra bougie and shit oh my yeah. god okay you had to ask are you one thing i realized that i'm not very good at and, and and i don't know if it's more of like i don't think like i de, i don't know if deserve it's the, the word but like <laughs> I, I don't ever celebrate like big monumental things so i don't need well, I, I got i got my I got my um, uh, profit and loss, my P and L statements back for for October. I haven't got it for Max. Be the type yet. of guy to change the brand of his damn trash bags at the office to save four dollars on his P and Ls, and I fucking love it. Well, well, I'm I'm saying celebrate. I'm, I'm celebrating like monumental things. As of October, mm -hmm. as of October, Sour Strips has crossed twenty million dollars in revenue. I was gonna guess twelve, bro. Twenty? Yeah. This year. Yeah. As of, as of October, bro. In candy. I thought you were doing 15. We did 16 last year. We'll do like 20. And your 20. margin's at least a 
we're getting it's improving all the time. It's probably thirty five around there. Yeah, but but so you're like, taking a lot of money home. No, so I don't. But I don't use no, any of it. Stop. I don't. I don't. No, I, stop. No, I don't. Stop. I, I don't. I, I do not move. <laughs> You, you want to? I'll I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll be super. I'll Use be super some of that for the ring, huh? I'll be no, 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 no. Personal money. Personal. Smart. Well, you, YouTube. I, I will be t- completely transparent. The only the the only money that I've pulled out of sour strips at any point, besides like you know for tax, like I I take like a management fee that goes into my holdings account. But when I bought that land, yeah, which was mm. five hundred and ninety thousand dollars, five hundred eighty. We need to have a kid at the same time. Yeah, yeah I don't for mean sure. disrupt you. Not but together, I, but yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I pulled that money out of sour strips. I was like, I pulled that mm. half a million dollars out of sour strips. But as much as it doesn't make sense, I am paying back sour strips that money. Bro, I've okay. already paid back three hundred thousand dollars of that Can land, and I'm going to pay back Can every I dollar. I don't. I don't know if what I'm about to say is f- how how it, how accurate the advice is. But what my accountants had me do, which just made my life so much easier, mm-hmm. is make a ZBA. So you make a ZBA with your bank account. So I have so it's ZBA ZBA. What is that? Ninety percent sure ZBA. I don't fucking know. But what it is essentially is that now you have the holding company. You have all the other ones, right? Mm-hmm. And so now every single night at midnight, all of my bank accounts, like like the a easy way to put it, they all get put to zero. What? Except for my main one. So the ZBA means that every single. Essentially, any time any of the companies need any any money, whatsoever, any day, every single day it resets, it it it, it goes from that. So it's almost like one big pot. Because ultimately, do you have any partners? No. So does everything funnel up to you anyway? Yeah. So ultimately, you're going to be paying the same tax. Yeah. So ultimately, all the extra effort to go and fucking do all that shit, not yeah, really worth it. I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what you just said. Okay, but you can listen back. The point I'm trying to get at is that not only do I am I paying back the company for the money that I took out for that land and I will pay back every cent even though it's it's all <laughs> even if it's not necessary I just feel just, yeah yeah I yeah. guess that's good because because you're right yeah mentally it is weird to mix it it's weird to pull it no, yeah. the way that I've looked at money even with ever forward and sour strips has been like when I was making money with just social media mm-hmm. and whatever I I didn't think twice about like, yeah, I'd buy new cameras and stuff to reinvest back in the business but I was like oh that's just like the money that I can live off of but when I started ever forward and when I started Sour Strips, I almost felt like I w- like I'm like I'm not allowed to touch that money. That's yeah. that's the business, not even a oh I want to make sure yeah, reinvest. Yeah. No, because, you should and you should feel like that. 100%. But like I, I almost feel like like it's whether it be legally or but morally, you just I'm pay like, yourself a distribution. I think I I, I think it'd be better. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a fortunate position that like I have the social media money I make can support everything that I want to do. Yeah, that's awesome. But mm-hmm. I guess the whole reason I brought up all that was, you know, we hit. $20 million in October. And I'm going to do something really cool for my, my, my company, but I'm talking about me on a personal level. I never really celebrate these monumental things mm-hmm. ever, ever. I mean, 20 million. What the fuck, bro? Yeah. Like of can, you know how much candy that is? That's a lot of that's fucking even, candy. That's even, not bro. that that's not impressive. You do clothing, whatever, but to th- a $3 in product. A, a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, wild. Yeah. We're not selling a hundred dollar product. We've collectively sold over $50 million of candy. But but when I hit twenty million, I, I saw that when she sent me the thing, and I and I crossed over the twenty, and I I, I, lo- I remember looking at it and going like, "Wow, that's really cool. I'm really proud of myself." But like, I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't think to myself yeah. like I should go treat myself to a like I really like the car- table, the, the it, Cartier it, it, cuff bracelet. You want a table with Spire, bro? I'll buy it. I, <laughs> and and I don't know. It's just been the kind of like yeah. the and this is such a fucking like I feel like not tasteful thing of like, oh, Max hit a bunch of millions, didn't buy himself something fancy. But I've always felt weird about, about like celebrating like my own successes in yeah. life. Like I just, I feel like I don't, I don't it's know. It's good though, man. Like you got friends to celebrate them for you and help you like celebrate your accomplishments. And I think that that's why like I like buying my friends gifts. Literally by friends, I mean you. Uh, <laughs> like I, <laughs> and Heidi, like, I, 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 in, you know, very small circle, but like, I think that when you have people like that, you also typically have people that do make you stop and celebrate. So hopefully, like Taylor, like, you know, if that's a huge, you know, she, no, she will does. Be she like, hypes yeah, me exactly. up all the time. But in my head, that's I'm what like, our women are for, bro. That's you know, that's what our women are. For. We're here to fucking keep going. That was good. Yeah, it was good. You celebrate a lot recently, but you, you've I so you've gotten like not only I, I see it in your demeanor, the fact that. Now, when 
when I was like, do let's do a podcast, it was like, yeah, just tell me when, like whatever, like mm -hmm. I'm free, like whenever, um, which is not something you've commonly done. It's more like, oh, I got to, you know, talk to my fucking assistant, but figure out my schedule type of thing, which was always, you know, uh, a, it was just interesting. I was like, oh, it's, it's like my, my, I have to like go through someone else to talk to my nah, friend. Kind never of again, bro. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it's been cool, but it's cool. It's cool to see you, I think, get better, like mm -hmm. just in, as a like healthier, happier, um, enjoying life, you know, getting sleep. Like it's, it's really, feels, really cool. It feels pretty good. <laughs> who who, who would have thought that like getting a full night's arrest has been like a like just something that we should applaud but like yeah. people are and it's good people worry about you man people worry about I, I, and that's what you asked me about the subscribers like how do you take all the comments bro at the end of the day i know that people watching me majority of the time are looking out at the bottom of it so it's like i know there's something i got to read between the lines to kind of take sense of um and i think that now i'm just a much better spot in my life to kind of enjoy it yeah and you know? you've been uh what's what's the biggest thing you've been enjoying pokemon yeah, yeah, yeah. started Game collecting boy. again bro i even <laughs> started collecting the cards so we went to the, uh, on thanksgiving went to the parents house found a fucking charizard okay <laughs> not worth anything and did you and, buy a pack no i had boxes of pokemon cards so oh. i literally like, i don't know where cards, i don't know bro. where my old cards well are. let me i'll fucking buy the boxes i don't know where i'll they pay are. 50 bucks for the box random let's go <laughs> and then and then so i found all these old cards maybe like eight old like first edition holographic worth possibly worth something cards mm -hmm. so i took them into the store they're maybe worth like i don't know 500 600 bucks but i bought like two packs of the new uh, I was like, okay, if I want to buy a pack of cards to start collecting fresh, because these aren't worth anything, yeah. really, how do I do it? So the original 151 Pokemon, like Generation 1, they just re-released, uh, it's Pokemon 151, they call it. So it's the original 151 packs, but like updated. From Bulbasaur to Mew. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the holographic ones, you get two per pack. So I bought, and so I just ordered like 50 more packs. So they come in on the first. Yeah, okay, so, so when I was in Pokemon forever ago. I never would, played the game. I, I, I did. I used to go to Books a Million on Saturdays and play and trade and all this shit. I was a nerd about it. But like back then, you buy your cards for real. I don't have them. I don't know where they are. Find them. Buy them. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know where they would be. But back then, it was like you open a pack. It's interesting how it's changed because now it's like one holographic guaranteed in every pack. But back then, it you was didn't like get shit. Oh, I know. Yeah. Let me let me test your your Pokemon because you didn't know about the the secret rare candies that are hidden in the grass and like in the somewhere in, in the random spots where there's nothing there. Yeah, dude. Behind in Cerulean City, you mm -hmm. go through the guy house. You go in his backyard. You go all the Bill. way to the right. You go up one, over two. Oh, before, not Bill. You're talking about the guy on the left of the city. Yeah. Before you go up the fucking thing. Yeah. yeah Rare yeah. candies in I there. I didn't know that. I'm okay, going to go dude. get it. I'm going to go okay, get it. Okay, dude. Uh, what are the evolutions of Oddish? Oddish, Gloom, Vileplume. And if you're talking fucking Pokemon, <laughs> how's it? No one Gold, cares. Silver, no one. No one cares about silver. Yeah, but lost them, bro. Okay. That's uh, a, that's a, who does uh, Ponita? Fucking Rapidash. Oh, forty. Come okay. on. Okay. How do you get Golem? Golem, you can only get via trade. <sighs> I've never got a Golem though, but I did buy the trading cable. What's your favorite Pokemon? Ah, uh, Magmar. That's a good one. That Magmar is a, is a one. Magmar is a good one. Cool one, right? Mine was all. I think the one. I think people would would Squirtle. understand. No. No. What is it? Scyther. So sick. So sick. So sick. And the other one that no one ever uses, but I would always try to level them Hard up. Hard to get, though. Scyther, Oh, bro. oh yeah. Then you find you them gotta in the You got to go in the, in the safari. And you find them, and you're like, and they fleas. And oh, you're like, oh, my. Motherfucker. I know. Uh, I know. My, one of my other favorites, yeah. Beedrill. He's a good one. He's, He's just cool looking. I, I really with like ass uh, with that like little pincer pony thing. too. Pincer. Oh, yeah, yeah. But also him safari. And are kind of weak, bro. Like, I'm like, uh, I feel like they should be stronger Pokemon because they're they so cool. Be. Like yeah. Scyther's like, fuck, you well, know. you know, in silver, he has a cool evolution. That's even harder to get him. It's yeah. it fun, bro. I'm just like, you start my way back and start to play. How, how is, how is like, so I'm assuming now you have more free not you have more free time you're 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 establishing that you don't need to work 24 7 I think the Pokemon right? helps me with my ADHD so I think that it helps because like I'm constantly just fidgeting so it helped like I'm I never just play Pokemon really I'm always doing that with something else so Christian I, when I when I look at your stories I'm like when you're like out to lunch or dinner oh, with I Heidi, carry it I see the Game Boy in the no stories. you don't understand like I'm an addictive personality like I I I, I try to catch a Magmar for 14 hours you're kind of a loser 14 hours, bro. Making hundreds of millions. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to use the master ball, bro. You only I, get one, yeah, right? I use it on him. Oh, my God. You don't get, yeah, you only have the master ball at that you know, point of the game. You're someone who would appreciate this. You know what I tell Taylor? Mm. Uh, I tell Taylor that she's a Mew because yeah. she's one of the most rarest Pokemon in the Pokemon world. You can only get it with a master ball. It's this super cute thing, but it's the most powerful Pokemon. It is. It learns all the TMs. All the TMs. It does. <laughs> I forgot about the TMs. Those are the things you have to teach the Pokemon that you can. Oh, my God, man. Do you think it stands for teach me? No, it definitely stands for something. Teach me. Mm, mm. I don't know. I don't know. She's in the podcast. Well, bro, I, I'm. I. This was really good. Yeah. Like I, this, uh, this conversation was. Uh, I feel like. I think the people see like a different light. They see you're you're in a just a like a better place. I'm happy for you. You know, when you talked to me about you know recently about the Alpha Elite thing, kind of like, you know, instead of chasing more 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 it's more like let's make a better company mm -hmm. rather than trying to create the most the top biggest. line number company because yeah. there's there's a drastic difference yeah. there's a drastic difference and i think having you at a healthier place is let's the right see move. it correctly you know what i mean yeah yeah and it's like and bro you're about to you're about to start a family bro i'm dead seriously we need to plan when we're fucking having kids I don't uh, want them in, I don't really want I'm them gonna, in a different gear. I'm going to try to have sex tonight. So if you want to, yeah, no, I'll same. text you before and and then we can. I jizzed the cup yesterday. So went to the doctor, dropped it off. Oh, to find out? Yeah. Mm. Yep. To find out if you, how do you think life's going to change when you have kids? Are you excited to have kids? Well, I think I, I think the first, it's like, can I have kids? Because mm -hmm. I've been taking testosterone. So, I, but I think I'm, I don't know. I think I'm good. Wait, <laughs> you're not natty? <laughs> what? <laughs> so we're checking that, okay. and if 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 when I'm do you, not when do you, when do you get it back, pretty soon I think. But if it's not producing, then I just have to take this like one thing that Rob Lipset told me about. Thank you, Rob. H H C G. Oh, like a penis pump that he was telling me about. Yeah. That. Just, Wait, how did it feel to just in a cup? Splooge in a cup, bro. It was wild because you can't do it for like four days before. I'm sure that's tough for you. Well, I just like, oh, <laughs> I was like, whoa, right away. Wait, is this something you mailed in or you went to a place? I went to drop it off, wrap right up my house. So you're just like, Heidi, I need to go into the bathroom. Don't bother me. Well, no, I was waiting for her. <laughs> she was in a fucking meeting and I was actually mad at her. So I was like, how did you not come up in time? We have to go. What the hell? So I did it myself. I was like, yo, <laughs> like what? <laughs> I was you supposed to be a part of that. <laughs> so are you, are you trying to have kids like now? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So if Heidi today was like, yeah. I'm pregnant. I'm like, you better get pregnant, bro. I no, t like soon, right? Yeah, I hope they end up in the same grade because I think that'll that'll really affect a lot of our lives if they're in the same year. I'm ex no one. Th we the, need to hit the same year within the the next twelve to sixteen months. A child. I'll hold will mine back be for a year if yours is old. <laughs> <laughs> Make them start at the same time. I don't know if Taylor wants to be pregnant while she's because uh, we. Next October is when we're getting married. Uh, yeah, that, that's damn. We we should be around the same time. Yeah, we're about to have our kids are gonna be BFFs. Your kids bro, gonna we'll be. We'll go jacked. to all the parent teacher conferences. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for the future, bro. Me too, man. Me too. I'm excited. Jolly, I know. Okay, we try to get Joe on board. He was literally just like, "I'm ready to have kids now." With who? <laughs> His fiance. Huh. Charlie's gonna have kids, like, with and I said Joe, bro. Oh, Joe. Yeah. I oh, said Joe. Oh no, he'll yeah. just yeah. <laughs> one lucky or unlucky lady will be the. There you go. Yeah, that'll, be, go. The, that'll, be, the, that'll be the one. You want to leave the people with any uh any what's next? Anything cool coming up? Any big projects? Man, I just want to end the video with be sure to subscribe to the new YouTube channel. Uploading every other day. Do you want me to put both channels? No, or? just a new one. Are you ever gonna upload on mm -hmm. the other channel? No. It's done. Ever. I, want, I, I thought about it. I was like, maybe I'll do an announcement for something to like drive some extra hype. But I was like, that's abusing. That's well, abusing my channel. I want to leave this podcast on Christian said, and I quote, that he will pay me $1,000 if his new YouTube channel, um, he said that he will hit 1 million subscribers in the first 18 months. Mm -hmm. And you give me $1,000. Mm, that's, you, com that's confident. <laughs> I mean this, and I'm not, people are going to, I'm Christian, there's no way. 
It could take a little bit longer. It may, <laughs> and I may be out of grand. I'm but excited. I will to fucking be. get there, and I will be rushing to get there. You know what I'll take instead of a thousand dollars? You and me going to fucking Eduardo's, ne- just a Mexican restaurant, and having, having a margarita and some food together, right, bro. Deal, deal, the deal. Right, deal. Peace. Thanks, bro. That will conclude this episode of Don't Be Sour. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you want the Guma back on here. I'm taking a new approach to this podcast thing. It's much more just like casual shit than so you come back in two weeks bro we'll chat about random ass stuff bro, there's so much more we could talk about oh i don't dude i had a whole notes but we started flowing and Can you, no you can't look at it no, <laughs> okay this, for next time. this is my secret notebook it literally says look what do you have for alex from mosey don't be sour would oh, you have like questions like bro how does your brain compute all this shit I don't know if the, the <laughs> podcast people know this, but I think the only reason Alex Hermosi He thought uh, you own ghosts. He thought I own ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> because when I went there, he goes, it's so cool what you're doing. And I thought he was going to say about Sour Strips. He goes, it's so cool what you're doing with all of the like licensing deals with the drinks. And I was like, and it, my, my brain started going. I was like, I think this guy thinks I own ghosts. Because in my bio, I've gotten this before, bro. That's why I don't put it in my bio. No, 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 no. Because it says owner- Ever forward, yeah. sour strips, don't be sour. Athlete. And and, and then under on the next line, it says movement ghost code max. Yeah. So I think people think I own all this. I'm like, how the fuck would I own all of this? <laughs> oh my God. But I, I think when I told him that I was, was like, like, oh, he was probably like, fuck. well, let me use these for my reels. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll just do the fucking podcast, bro. But uh, Christian, thanks for coming on the episode, bro. Definitely going to have you back. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. Make sure if any on YouTube, make sure you like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment down below. If you're on any sort of podcast streaming service, give us a five star review. I don't know what it does, but I think it helps new episodes every Monday at 9am. Unless we don't give you one. <laughs> I love that. You like that? Every other day at 12 weeks, unless we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I would say like yes. two vlogs a week, unless you don't only get one, you know? Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Eat more sour strips. And ever forward. Woof! Good, bro. That was a good potter. I feel good. I didn't even think I was sweating. I'm mildly intoxicated. Yeah, I'm pretty drunk. I'm ready to go get jacked out of my mind at Outland. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>